What's growing on, gardeners? Have you ever wondered what the differences are between avocados that look like this, often called Florida avocados, and avocados that look like this, often called California avocados? Well, on today's video, I'm going to give you the truth as to what the real differences are between these two, and it's a story that you've never heard. And I'm also going to tell you the incredible story as to why almost all commercial avocados in grocery stores these days look like this. And at the end of the video, we'll break into them both and give them a taste test. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon store and Spreadshop links in the video description for everything I use in my garden and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. Avocados are a source of great controversy and confusion. To solve the mystery of the avocado, we can consult the internet, but like most information on the internet, we have to wade through all of the wrong information before we reach the truth. For example, if you go to Google and you type in California versus Florida avocados, you will get an article from the American Institute for Cancer Research that tries to break down the difference. You'd think that the American Institute for Cancer Research would know what they're talking about, but you'd be wrong. They either lazily or ignorantly oversimplify it down to fat content, stating that the biggest nutritional differences between California and Florida avocados is the fat content and that Florida avocados have less fat than California avocados absolute nonsense because there's no such thing as California or Florida avocados in reality. California and Florida avocados do not vary in fat content because you can grow either avocado in either state provided that your climate is mild enough. In fact, I just went to the grocery store where they had a sign for Florida avocados. And when you actually look at the avocados that are inside the bin, they are grown in the Dominican Republic. This avocado right here that I just purchased as a Florida avocado was not grown in Florida. Imagine buying a Jersey tomato that was grown in California. No one would ever stand for that, but yet we do this misnomering with avocados. The same thing goes with this avocado right here. You may think this is a common California grown avocado, but in fact it was grown in Mexico. It is a Hass variety, no doubt, that you commonly grow in California in commercial culture, but this was not grown in California. So how did we get here? And why does Florida tend to grow avocado varieties that look like this? And why does California tend to grow avocado varieties that look like this? Well, it all boils down to climate. And in order to understand that, you need to understand the three different races of avocados. There are three different races of avocados, the Mexican race, the Guatemalan race, and the West Indian race, where in this case, West Indian does not refer to the country of India, but rather the West Indies, which is the Caribbean and Central America. Avocados are native to the Americas, hence the Latin name Persia Americana. Mexican avocados come from the subtropical and tropical highlands of Mexico. They come from the highest latitudes and the highest elevations of all the avocados. So for that reason, they tend to be the most cold hardy. In fact, pure Mexican avocados can, for a very brief period, tolerate temperatures down into the upper teens. And that is how I'm able to grow this variety of avocado in ground in North Carolina, where I live. This is a pure Mexican avocado variety called Lila, and it's able to tolerate the cold weather that we have here. The way you can tell if you have a Mexican avocado variety is by the scent of the leaves. Guatemalan and West Indian varieties, when you crush up the leaves, don't really have a scent. But when it's a Mexican avocado and you crush up the leaves, it smells like black licorice. It is a wonderful smell. It smells like anise. At least that's how I say it. Some people say anise. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's not pronounced anus because it couldn't be because it just smells too good. Guatemalan avocados are from the tropical highlands of Guatemala and the surrounding region. Because they are from a lower elevation and lower latitude than Mexican varieties, they are significantly less cold hardy. Depending on the variety, they can generally tolerate brief temperature dips down to about the 25 to 30 degree range, but you will more than likely see some damage and tip burn. Prolonged temperatures colder than that can kill them. West Indian avocados come from the tropical lowlands, so they did not evolve to tolerate any frost or freeze. For that reason, they are very susceptible to frost, and a hard freeze that's prolonged can kill them. But they also happen to be the most tolerant of rainfall and humidity and are the most disease resistant of all the avocado races. Most commercial avocados sold in stores today are actually hybrid crosses between these different races. You see, avocados don't grow true to type. When you plant an avocado pit, you get a random 
one unique tree every time. For instance, only one Hass avocado ever grew from seed, and every Hass avocado tree on the entire face of the earth is a clone of that tree by taking and propagating cuttings and budwood. Over generations, fruit wood and fruits have been imported from Mexico and Central America, and trees have been cross-pollinating in commercial orchards and backyards for over a century. Every time a fruit falls to the ground unnoticed and the seed germinates, a new avocado variety is born. Because there are constantly new avocado varieties being born, over time, the commercial industry has changed their cultivars of choice. Today, about 95% of all avocados sold in grocery stores in the U.S. and 80% of the worldwide market are the Hass avocado or a Hass-like avocado. And that is pronounced Hass, not Haas, and it's spelled H-A-S-S, -S, not H-A-A-S. That is because it's named after Rudolf Hass, who grew the first Hass avocado tree. But it wasn't always this way. Generations ago, the most popular cultivar of avocado grown commercially was the Fuerte avocado. In the early 1900s, a long-duration hard freeze swept through California and damaged or killed many avocado trees. One tree planted in the garden of a man named Alexander LeBlanc sailed through the freeze relatively unharmed, and that tree was named Fuerte, which is Spanish for strong. That variety was then propagated and it became one of the first commercial avocados in California. Now, Fuerte is a green-skinned avocado. The skin does not change color when ripe, which is actually typical of most avocados. Back in the day, you actually had to feel the avocado to tell when it was properly ripened. Now, Hass avocado skin turns black when ripe, and at the time, believe it or not, this was an undesirable trait. The public was used to green-skinned avocados, and black fruit was associated with rotten fruit. However, Rudolf Hass and his partner Harold Brokaw promoted this fruit as a black-skinned alternative to Fuerte and they had an advantage. Because Fuerte was such a notorious alternate bearer, there were years where Fuerte produced poorly. Hass, a very consistent bearer, over time displaced Fuerte during those bad seasons thanks to its consistent bearing habit. Over time, Hass grew in popularity. Grocers liked it because of its thicker skin, better durability, and longer shelf life than Fuerte, while consumers grew to prefer the black skin that would turn ripe as a visual cue, and also they liked the nuttier flavor. By the 1950s, Hass became the dominant cultivar in the United States, and today it makes up about 95% of the U.S. market and 80% of the worldwide market. In fact, so trained is the consumer to expect the avocado skin to turn black that today, Green-skinned avocados, which make up the majority of varieties, are generally not even considered for wide marketing. So why all the confusion between so-called Florida and California avocados? Well, because the different races of avocados evolved in very different climates, they thrive in very different conditions. And the climates of Florida and California are very different, so therefore the commercial cultivars preferred in each location are very different. Because consumers are so conditioned to the Hass avocado, they have grown to demand the high oil content, creamy texture, and nutty flavor that Hass is known for. Well, Mexican and Guatemalan avocados tend to have a high oil content, but both races evolved in the tropical and subtropical highlands where humidity and dew points are generally lower. For that reason, California's low summer dew points produce very good quality Mexican and Guatemalan avocados, but Florida's high dew points points do not. Mexican avocados can grow well in North and Central Florida where it's cooler because they flower so early in the winter and they ripen their crop the exact same calendar year. But they're not appropriate for commercial markets because their skin is paper thin and their shelf life is terrible. You're never going to find any Mexican races of avocados in any kind of widespread commercial grocery store because they're just not suitable for grocery chains. Guatemalan avocados are best suited for commercial production. Production. They tend to have thicker shells and better shelf life, but they also take over a year to ripen on the tree. Northern Florida is too cold for Guatemalan type orchards and Southern Florida is too humid because the fruit hangs for so long on those varieties that they tend to rot in the humid, high dew point, wet climates. For this reason, California has one of the only climates in the United States that is suitable for widespread Guatemalan type avocado production. 
Hass is a Guatemalan type avocado. While it is, genetically speaking, a Mexican Guatemalan hybrid, the genes expressed are of Guatemalan. They have a Guatemalan type shell, very low cold hardiness, similar to a Guatemalan variety, and they are susceptible to frost and they have no anise smell in the leaves. So these types of fruits just don't grow reliably in Florida. Yes, you can grow them in backyard culture, but you're going to get a poor harvest because all of the fungal diseases diseases are going to rot a lot of the fruit. So you'll likely never make a profit growing Guatemalan type avocados in Florida commercially. Because of Florida's challenging climate, the only location you can reliably have avocado orchards will be South Florida where frost and freezes are rare. And because of the extreme humidity and rainfall in the summers, the only race of avocados that have evolved to reliably deal with those conditions is the West Indian race of avocados because they came from the tropical Caribbean. So basically, Florida commercial growers are basically forced into growing West Indian type avocados or avocado varieties that express the West Indian genes. West Indian avocados, like you see right here, are very large. They tend to weigh about one to three pounds each and they have a higher water content. A Hass avocado, depending on when it's harvested, usually has an oil content of 18 to 22% whereas West Indian varieties tend to have somewhere around an 8 to 12 percent oil content. Now that being said, there is still no such thing as a California or Florida avocado. They're just umbrella terms that you lump a whole bunch of different unique varieties into. For example, the Hass avocado is going to be by far the most popular variety that you will find in a grocery store, but there are other similar varieties that could be mixed in, like a gem or a surprise or a fuerte or a Gwen or something else like that. In fact, if you've ever seen the large Hass avocados that are sometimes sold in grocery stores, a lot of time they're a lamb Hass avocado. They're very similar. You wouldn't really know it unless you were some kind of professional grower or a fruit geek like me. And if you're watching this from California and you go to those farm market stands when it's avocado season, your favorite avocado variety is probably a reed. This West Indian variety of avocado that I'm holding could be any number of varieties. It could be a Hall, a Monroe, a Simmons, a Choquette, a Donnie, a Pollock, a Catalina. I don't really know my West Indian avocados very well, but there's no such thing as a Florida avocado or a California avocado. It's a misnomer and a catch-all umbrella term. Many times your Florida and California avocados aren't even from Florida or California, like I showed you in this video. They're actually imported from other countries. And that right there is my crash course on avocados and a short history of the avocado industry in the United States and worldwide. Since I purchased my future homestead property in Florida, I have been intensely researching avocado varieties. And I won't lie, it's a little depressing to know I won't be able to reliably grow my favorite Guatemalan types there, but I'm sure I will find something I will love. Now let's break into both of these avocados and record the difference. All right, let's cut into both of these avocados, and we're going to start with the Hass avocado, and we've all had these a million times before, I'm sure, but if you don't know the best way to cut into an avocado, you want to remove the little stem end, and then you want to cut down directly until you hit the pit. Then you want to run your knife around in a circle and then you are going to twist. And then it should come out cleanly. We've all seen Hass avocados before and we know that they are a smaller avocado variety that has a small to medium sized pit relative to the flesh of the avocado. Uh, it will always have pretty much no fiber, no strings to it. So let's taste this. It scoops out of the shell very easily. Mm. It is just, it's so good. Even for a grocery store avocado, sometimes they can be hit or miss. They get dinged up in shipment, but this one is very good. Mm. It is rich. It is creamy. You can tell it has a high oil content and it has that nutty, somewhat peppery flavor that we're used to on the Hass. However, you can tell it's a grocery store avocado fruit because it almost has like a background leafy green, almost chlorophyll taste to it. I generally think you get that in a lot of grocery store fruits because they always pick them immature so they don't get damaged in shipment and you just can't get that taste out of there. You don't get that on your homegrown garden vegetables and fruits. Still very good though. Now we're going to cut into this monster West Indian quote unquote Florida avocado. And I've never had an avocado this big in my life. But the first thing I'm noticing is when I cut into it, 
uh, some water actually starts running down the side. And we're going to twist this. Wow, look at that monster fruit right there. And here's an incredible close-up of both avocados. You can see the difference in them. Wow, really something amazing, really impressive. And I can't wait to actually taste test them side by side. So now let's give this unknown West Indian variety a taste. And it feels very similar in terms of the ripeness of the hash. So there should be an apples to apples comparison. The texture seems about the same. Hmm. Wow. It definitely is a bit different. This West Indian variety almost has a sweetness to it. It tastes sweet. It almost has a little bit of a cashew taste to it. Okay. Okay, I'm really getting the difference when I do it side by side like this. The Haas style avocado definitely has more oil in it and it has more of a the nutty flavor is more like a walnut flavor where it's a little bit more roasty if you can imagine that whereas this avocado the nutty flavor is more like a cashew flavor where it is almost sweet cashews are much sweeter and they have less of that astringency roasty flavor than a walnut mm. i i really honestly thought that I was going to vastly prefer the Hass avocado to these West Indian types because these have the reputation of being lower in fat and more watery. The texture is almost identical. The flavor is really 90% similar. It's just this flavor is a little more roasty, whereas this flavor is a little more sweet. This is absolutely fantastic. Now, I will say that the Hass variety would definitely make a better guacamole. The Hass is not sweet at all, and it has that, that more earthy, roasty texture. I think if this was going to be uh, mashed into guacamole, it would almost be too sweet. Uh, but in terms of side by side, if you were putting it in a salad or on a sandwich or just eating it straight out of the shell, this one is every bit as good as the Hass. In fact, in some ways it is more complex because it has that sweetness flavor that the Hass uh, definitely does not have. And it is clear that this variety does have a little bit higher of a water content, but it is definitely not watery. This side-by-side -side comparison has completely changed my preconceived notions of these West Indian types. They are really good. In preparation for this video, I went to a grocery store and I purchased multiple different varieties of West Indian avocados. You can clearly see this one is a brown skinned and this one is a green skinned. Most are going to be green skinned. They're a little bit harder to find, but let me tell you, for eating right out of the shell, these are absolutely fantastic. And I'm thrilled that I have several more that are sitting on my countertop because I'm gonna be eating these all week. So if you've never had a West Indian avocado before and you've been scared away because people say they aren't as good as a Hass, for fresh eating, uh, these are just every bit as good as a Hass, and I haven't eaten yet today, so yes, I'm going to eat this entire avocado. This is going to be my lunch. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and please ring that notification bell so you're notified when I release more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I use in real life in my garden, they are all linked down below in my Amazon storefront in the video description, so expand the video description. Click on the Amazon link and you'll see everything I use in real life, and while you're there, check out my spread shop for custom merch if you want to support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope to see you all again on the next video. And if you have any questions about these avocados, please ask them in the comments section below. Well, that was quite the way to wake up for the morning, huh, buddy? Did you enjoy that howl? Did you enjoy the howl? I'm howling through a paper towel tube. <laughs> uh, you want your breakfast? Are you hungry? Oh, you're hungry. You're vocal this morning.